Just to, to put it in a bigger perspective, the river was dry uh, there for many decades, um, starting around when they built Fryant Dam. Um, and then so after they built Fryant Dam, uh, Reach 2 went dry. It had water for five years after being dry for many years and, and some interim flows before 2016. Um, but last year and last year it uh, went dry for the summer and the fall, and then it was rewatered in December. So it's had water uh, from December up until uh, up until now. One of the largest runs of salmon in California was effectively extirpated once the dam was built. They couldn't access their historical spawning grounds in um, the upper reservoir or the upper watershed. Um, and so by not being able to access those historical spawning grounds, eventually year upon year after the dam was built, um, the salmon population became extinct. And so in 1988, a group of environmental organizations sued the federal government. They sued it under a uh, fish and game code that basically said that you needed to maintain fish populations in good condition below dams in the state of California. And then after 18 years of lobbying lawsuits back and forth and actions back and forth and negotiations, in 2006, we signed a settlement with NRDC, um, the Bay Institute, um, several other organizations, and the federal government to restore salmon populations in good condition below Fryant Dam. The, the focus is really the spring run Chinook salmon, which haven't existed in the San Joaquin River for, you know, 70 some odd years. In this reach, reach two, um, it actually got a lot more flow uh, than normally would have occurred with the restoration flows because the exchange contractor deliveries don't have to comply with seepage constraints. Um, they do have to comply with the levy capacity constraints. Um, so REACH 2 got um, a really uh, significant flow since about December up until uh, through June. 
And then in early July, um, those exchange contract deliveries ended because uh, they were able to turn on more pumps in the Delta and supply the the normal route. <laughs> the exchange contract deliveries come out of the lower outlet, the river outlet in Bryant Dam. And because that lower outlet draws from the cold water pool in Millerton Reservoir, because of the large volume of, of cold water pool lost, um, we're holding that water until the fall. Um, so normally in a dry year type, which we're in right now, the um, river would be connected all year. God. We didn't expect that there would be a call on Fran ever. We never thought that we would have to evacuate part of the reservoir for another set of water users. And so um, we didn't anticipate that this would be an impact and then we'd suddenly be looking at, well, there was water available, but we had to give it to someone else and we couldn't keep it for the fish and so the fish died. So finding a way to protect the program from some of these outside impacts is also um, a pretty key thing. People were optimistic, but not terribly optimistic. And I think the fact that the salmon have continued to return is something that we need to um, make sure doesn't stop and we don't waste this momentum we have going behind us. It, it needs to be recognized that the maintaining the river um, is is essential because you, a river isn't like a, a farm. You can't turn the water on and off. Um, the river needs the water um, in reach to where you were. If you look at aerial photos um, from 1998 and today, it looks the same. The vegetation has not come back. And if you keep turning off the river, um, you're not going to get the trees to come back. You're not going to get the vegetation. Um, and so it, it just um, fundamentally, <laughs> there, there needs to be recognition of, you know, all these other uh, priorities, really, that um, the Bureau is balancing and, and that the public wants to see protected. <laughs>